to know that. Very important. Now, just a quick overview. Axial map is a map that provides us just a, a value that is called <coughs> the distance between the surface and the, and the, and the axis. It's not the true curvature. It's not. It's just the distance between the surface and the axis. So that creates a soft maps, very beautiful maps. But it's not very, very useful to know <coughs> the exact place of the lens, you know? It, it helps us to know that you have larger optical zones, how much treatment we did, and so on. But I prefer the, the, the true maps, like instantaneous or curvature, and so on. So that is called tangential or true or instantaneous and so on. Tangential map provides us the real curvature in any point. And that creates very difficult to understand shapes because, for example, axial map is very useful at the beginning to know, wow, there is a stigmatism there, this limbo, this central, and so on. It's very useful. But after that, it's, for me, it's very important to, to work in a differential, uh, tangents, uh, in tangential instantaneous map that is real curvature. Elevation maps is useful in order to know before to fit the lens that the lens will be centered or not. Uh, that's why, because the lens will always try to go to the ele more elevated areas. And that will help us to understand if we have the center or not before that occurs. That's the only reason to have that. And now we are going to the main problems that are centering problems, yeah? So, well, that's what we want always. A lens that, this is the lens. That's the cornea. That's the center of treatment. This is perfect alignment. Sorry, this is uh, bullseye, yeah? No problem here. This is, I, I will show you in the next slides, this, like, the pressure is well done at the end of the reverse curve that makes the treatment, okay? Okay. This is a central lens. Yeah, very smooth, smooth. Center, you see all the lens without the leads. You, we, we look at the center, no, no touch there. Both alignment curves are good. And the lens is good in diameter, so ideally good result. That's what we want. We are the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the winners. That's one hour. That, uh, if you have two red rings, usually, if you have some, it depends on the topography, you would see two rings. These two rings. Uh, at the end, they join together, and the central ring is created for the back of the lens, and the external ring is created for the reverse curve pressure. One more, and so on. What what happened here? Is it you no? Know, and the lens is it's right under, it, so it's not difficult to guess. The lens is going up. Yes. So what happened is the cornea that the lens is up. We have too tight the upper zone, but the lower zone is slipped. It's not, we have no pressure in the lower zone. Yeah. Maybe you have some touch in the center. And that's what we have, we have here, here. So we have okay alignment in the nasal temporal, but we have a steep in the upper zone and flat in the lower zone. If we move the lens and we center the lens, we will see aligned curves perfect in nasal temporal, but in vertical, both superior and inferior, it will be quite flat. We will, some, we will see furiously there. Because we will have the equal, we have the mean value. When we center the lens, we have this flat and steep is make a medium flat in both. 
Okay? So that's important to understand. What we need here, probably a trolley lens. Why? Because then we have perfect alignment in all meridians. If not, hmm. Yes? You just made it bigger though. I mean, it looks small. Is it? The, you mean the lens? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So if you just made it bigger, wouldn't that just... Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The lens is too small. But when you what yeah, that's that's a great, great, great question. Great great thing. Um, the problem when you have a toric cornea or especially a toric periphery, you have in this case horizontal is good fit. Vertical is too flat. Yeah. What happened with the cornea? The cornea is choric and continues to be choric, and the lens is spheric and continues to be spheric. So you have the lens large, and you have more distance between the lens and the cornea. So when you have a choric cornea and you make the lens bigger, you have more separation between the lens and the cornea. Don't you follow that? So you make the lens bigger, and maybe the problem is solved, but maybe not. Maybe it's worse. Great point. Sometimes I solve that making the lens smaller. Why? Dr. Tom, he don't like toric lenses. And the thing he does is make the lens smaller to obtain the proper alignment. If you have a proper alignment, you have the centering. How do you, you work with the zone that the lens is more or less close to the cornea? For example, at 4 millimeters of the apex, you have a difference in between meridians of 30 microns that you need toric. Because when you arrive at 10 millimeters diameter, you have 60 or 70 or 90 percent most. Yeah. That's, Marino showed you that. You have a difference between the both surfaces. The surface of the cornea is one, the surface of the lens is another. When you are going further, the distance are increasing. So, when you are working with a very small lens, we have not so much difference between sagittal height in both meridians. But when you are on the limbal area, you have a very huge amount of difference of such the height within the both meridians. So one possibility is make the lens smaller. Why not? Another one is make it shorty. Another one is try to do bigger. Sometimes it works. Is that right? Yes. So before you do all that and make it more complicated, do you lift that lid? and then push the lens down yeah. to see if it centers first, or, if, or is that lid force creating that particular pattern? Oh, um, and if the lid force is creating that pattern, then what do you do? Uh, I need to repeat the question, please. So, just looking there, it's, it's riding high, correct? Sure. And, and it's flat on the bottom. Sure. I just need to determine if that flatness inferiorly is created by the lid force superiorly. It's because the lens is the lid is creating that, sure, right? Sure. So should you push that lens down? Yes. Check centration first, then. Yes. Before doing all of what you're talking about. Yes, so that's right. That's right. Now, if that's the case, and the lid is forcing that that pattern there, yeah. lid is creating that pattern. Then what do you do? Well, that's I I say to Ray. The, the the you need you you have three three options. For me, the best is toy lens. The second one is possible to make the lens smaller or large. Okay? But if you have the lens smaller, you avoid the upper zone. Mm -hmm. But if you have the lens smaller and the lid pulls it up, mm -hmm. you are dead. If, the, if you have a, a larger lens <coughs> that is similar like this, but the lens is going a little bit this distance, you will see the pretty similar pattern, mm -hmm. but the lens larger. So the center area will be quite down, more centered, and the result would be fine. 
So that's why a larger lens, it will be maybe the second option. So you've seen success with lid-induced patterns like that with a torque lens be successful? Sure. Charlie lens will be successful. With the lid. But, the, but, but if it's a lid effect, why are you considering a lid effect? The lens is going to be worn in the closed eye position. So shouldn't you take the lids out of the way, see what the lens does, and not consider redesigning the lens based upon lid forces? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I follow. Okay, the, here, this example has a problem. The problem is exactly what you say, and, and you just say exactly. We don't move the lens to center in the cornea. So we are talking on a lens that is the center after we open the lid. So I know that in close eye, the lens probably will go up. Uh, but I'm not sure because overnight we, we, we know what happens next day, next morning, not that this morning. So, Next morning, I could see the lens centered at good three months, so patient are happy, I'm happy, finish the problem. That's right. But next morning, I could see the lens that had been centered all the night in the upper zone, so I just made it. And I need to change for toric or large or something like that. So next morning, we tell us what happened exactly why. That's, that's true. The second point is, I say, the, we have the problem because this video don't, don't show us the lens center, that it does the place, we need to check that, it's pretty. I will, I will try to see in the video the right, right side, one moment. Here is a video, and, okay, the similar situation, the lens is up on the sclera. I, I hope some, someone moves the lens in the center, but no, that happens, okay. Okay, the problem with this video and these images, they are not following all the steps I, I told to you to do. And the, this is bad, but the good news are all of us will understand that it's necessary to open, push a little bit, the lens going down, center, then we assess what happens when the lens is in the center of the cornea. And then we, we, we avoid leads. We are not, the leads are, Leads are important because uh, when the pain, when, I'm going, I'm going for the question. Uh, when the lens are the center, sometimes you solve it uh, telling the patient, put your lens on and quickly go to the bed. Don't put TV, don't read anything. Okay, you agree? Yeah. Because when you blink, the lens move and go up. And if you if your stairs are not very nice, the lens will glue there. And then will remain there all the night. That's 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 lead forces that produce that, but because the patient blink with open eye with the with the lens that is not centered. Then or you teach the patient to go directly to the bed or you improve the feeding. Okay? Okay, you have a question. Can, can I just ask one more? Thing, just sure, sure. still on this. So, to just determine if that lid is creating that, the answer then you're saying is torque lens. But her answer, which was logical, was to make it larger. True. Sure. Is there a E value factor that you look at because it's flattening to determine whether you go larger first or torque first? No. Uh, uh, or it's just trial and error. I, I'm totally biased. So <laughs> I noticed that. So, so, so I think everybody here would be larger diameter bias uh, just because it's simple. Uh, okay. And your 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 question and the answer is on a on a on a theoretical level. On the theoretical level, theoretical level, you look at the eccentricity value to understand what happened with the limbal area of the body, right? Then you see you choose a toric or a spherical line. But in the real world, that I said previously, you look at the image and you know perfectly that you have the vertical meridian is not well aligned. You know that because the forest thing tells you very clear it's not necessary to go for the eccentric values. That is the truth. So then, if you want to have alignment in, 
horizontal and vertical meridian, go for it. Or if If you don't want, if you don't care about that, and the only thing you want is the patient happy, you could increase the diameter. Now, uh, this is uh, this, this is a discussion that is very interesting. Uh, I have more questions there, but I will finish with a with a, a point that is very very important. When you fit the toric or when you fit spheric. <clears throat> okay. We know that we could press, compress the, 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 the peripheral epithelium around 25 microns at least, not more than that, more or less. Some people say 15, some people say 20, some people say 25, maybe more. If I have a different sagittal height at the, at, the landing, at the end of the reverse curve, for example, a 6 mm central zone, Lens with a reverse curve of uh, 0.6, it will be 6 millimeters plus 1.2, 7.2. So at 7.2 core, if you have less than 25 microns, you could work with the spherical one. Why? Because when you put the lens on, the lens will rock a little bit, you will see a little bit the lift, and so on. If you are lucky and overnight the lens center, that happens most people of the times, you will compress the nail. Let's imagine that is a normal regular with the rule horizontal. Yeah? You will compress nasal and temporal peripheral epithelium, and the lens will settle down around 25 microns. At the end, you will have a total reverse curve alignment. So you will obtain treatment, correction for the spherical, and correction for the toric area. But you have more than that. You will never get a total reverse curve alignment, 360 degrees. So you will lose treatment effect on the, on the vertical, on the toric.